Okay, so first of all, I have a correlation table here where I am comparing the correlations between different compounds in the atmosphere. And I want to plot this table using a bubble chart to make a correlation matrix. My first step is to plot all of these numbers in a grid by numbering the columns and the rows. So I'm going to select all of this and drag it down. Then I am going to add numbers to the columns by holding down control and dragging to the side and numbering everything from one to seven. Then I'm also going to number the rows, but I'm going to number them in reverse order. So going from seven down to one. Then I am going to select all of this and I'm going to convert it into a query so I can unpivot the columns. Go to data and from table slash range and make sure my table has headers is selected and OK. And now we have the same table, but in the form of a query. Make sure the first column is selected and go to transform and unpivot columns and unpivot other columns. That will unpivot all of the columns except for the one you have selected. What this does is takes all the values in row seven and then the attribute column here is what used to be all of the column headings and then these values here are the values that used to be in row seven. So now everything is converted into three columns. I'm going to make a couple more changes to this. I'm going to rename the headings. So this will be the Y axis and this will be the X axis. And then at the moment, the numbers in the X axis are being recognized as text. You can tell this from the ABC up here in the corner, but I don't want this. I want them to be recognized as numbers. So I'm going to change these to whole numbers. And now I have made my minor edits to this. I am going to load it back into Excel by using close and load to and I'm going to load it onto the existing worksheet down here and OK. And now we have the same information we had before in this new table. All the numbers are the same as in the blue table. They're just laid out differently. Now I have the table laid out the way I want it. I'm going to insert the bubble chart, go to insert and charts and bubble chart. Then right click and select data and add. The series name is going to be value. The X values are going to be the X axis column here. If I click on the header with the black downwards pointing arrow, it will select the whole of that column in the table for me. And then the Y values are going to be the whole of the Y axis column. And you can see all of that has been selected as well. Then the bubble size is going to be the value column. And OK and OK again. And now I have a bubble chart with all of my correlations laid out in a grid. I'm going to make some minor adjustments to this. I want to be able to put in the variable names along the side and the bottom. So I'm going to add in some space to do that. I'm going to make this bit here much smaller. Just like that. Then I don't want the title and I'm going to adjust the axes. I want the minimum to be 0.5. Then the maximum needs to be however many variables you have plus 0.5. So in my case, this is going to be 7.5. And then make sure the major unit is one. And I'm going to do the same thing to the axes here as well. So the minimum is 0.5. 
and the maximum is 7.5 and then make sure the major unit is 1. Now at the moment all of the bubbles are massively overlapping so I need to make these smaller and I'm going to use the scale bubble size 2 feature. At the moment this is set to 100%. I'm going to decrease this to 30%. And then I'm going to add in data labels to this. If I select on the data labels, we can see that at the moment it's showing me the Y value, but I don't want this. I want it to show me the bubble size. Now I end up with really long numbers in this case, but I can fix that by selecting the value column and changing its number formatting to number with two decimal places. And now it's a lot easier to see the numbers. So what I have at the moment is a bubble chart where the size of the bubble represents how good the correlation is. Now I'm going to do some formatting to this. So I'm going to make all of the text black and bold and then increase the size a little bit. And you can see here the axis goes from 0.5 to 7.5 so it goes from smallest to biggest because of the way the y-axis is set up so that is why up here we had to number all of the rows going from biggest to smallest because that is how they are laid out in the chart if you tried to number them from smallest to largest you would end up with your table being flipped upside down now, these numbers don't actually mean anything, so I'm going to get rid of these by getting rid of the labels. And I also want to change this line so that it is black. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the axes down here. So I'm going to change the line to black and I'm going to get rid of the labels. Then I am going to change the grid lines up here so they are black as well, and also the grid lines going in the opposite direction. And for the outer box, I'm going to get rid of the border for that. Now I have the chart formatted, I'm going to add in some other colors into here. And I'm gonna do that by adding some more columns to this table. So I'm going to have less than 0.25, 0.25 to 0 0.5, 0.5 to 0.75, and greater than 0.75. Then I'm going to add in some numbers along the top here, 0, 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. Then I'm going to fill in the blank columns using an if formula, and it will be if this value here is greater than this value here. Then I'm going to put this in its own set of brackets. And then put a star symbol in here. In this context, the star symbol is working like the AND formula. So I'm saying if this value here is greater than zero and this value here is less than 0.25, I want it to show me this value, and if not, I want it to give me the non-applicable error message. Now, I want to be able to drag this formula across and down, so there's a couple of changes that I need to make. I'm going to press F4 to insert the dollar signs just in front of the row number so that when I drag the formula down, it will continue to look in this row. Then I want it to continue looking in this column when I drag the formula across. And to make absolute references inside of a table, you need to put a colon and then select the column again. So I'm going to do that for every single time the value is mentioned. And now I have done that, I should be able to drag the formula across and then down and it will fill in the rest of the table. So what this formula is doing 
is here, it's looking at this number 0.36 and it's asking is this greater than 0.25 and less than 0.5 and it is, so it's showing me the number. However, here it's looking at 0.63 and it's asking is this greater than 0.25 and less than 0.5 and it isn't, so I get the non-applicable error message. And the non-applicable errors will stop these values being plotted in the chart. So now I have had now I have set that up. I am going to add these new columns into my chart. Right click and select data and add. And the series name is going to be this here. The X values are going to be the same as they were before. It's going to be the X axes here. The Y values are going to be the Y axes again. And then this time the bubble size is going to be my new column here and enter and OK. And you can already see that the smaller circles are now a different color. Now I'm going to do that three more times. and then OK and OK again. And now I have a bubble chart with different colors in it. I'm going to add in a legend to this and we'll move the legend to the top. And I'm going to delete the value series from the legend and then increase the font size. Now I'm going to change the colors of my series to make them a little more intuitive. So for the values series, the, that is my original data series and the only numbers still showing from that are all the number ones, which are just the variables correlated with themselves. These aren't real correlations and I'm not interested in these, so I'm going to change those to no fill. Then for the less than 0.25 series, that is not a very good correlation, so I'm going to make this red. Then for 0.25 to 0.5, this is still not particularly good, so I'm going to make it a light orange. Then for the 0.5 to 0.75, that is quite a good correlation, so I'll make that a light green. And then for the greater than 0.75, that is a good correlation, so I'll make that a bright green. And now I have a correlation matrix where the size of the bubble indicates how good the correlation is, and the color of the bubble also indicates how good the correlation is. Now the next step is to add in the variable names along the side and the bottom. In my case, the names of the compounds, which I still have up here, so I'm going to copy these and go to insert and text box and text box and paste these into the text box. Now in order to make edits to this, we actually have to press escape to get rid of the dancing ants over here. And then I'm going to add in some lines in between this and also delete the extra spaces so that they all line up together. And now I've done that, I am going to format this so there is no shape outline and no shape fill. Then I'm going to move this text box down here and try and line up the variable names with the chart. I'm also going to make these right aligned and then increase the font size. This can take a little bit of fiddling around to get it right. A couple of tricks for this is to decrease the font size of the gaps in order to change the amount of space in between them. 
and also once you've changed the font size you can press F4 to repeat that change and it will change the font size again to match what you just changed it to. Now that might take a little bit of trial and error but once you're happy with the way it looks select the text box and press ctrl d to duplicate it then hold down shift while rotating the text box until it's on its side and then move it down to line up with the bottom and this is when we can check to make sure our correlation matrix is a perfect square because if it is a square then the circles will line up with these headings here so i'm now going to change the size of the chart to line up with the names and this also might take a little bit of fiddling around but once you're happy with it you can select the text box and then hold down control and select the other text box and then select the chart and go format and group them together then you can move the whole thing around and it's all grouped together now there's a number of different formatting designs that you can use for charts so you can try out some different variations of how the whole thing looks So in this video, I have shown you how to make a correlation matrix in Excel using a bubble chart, and that is everything.